Hello, everyone. We're at the University of New South Wales, and I'm Norman Wahlberger. We're here in the Faculty of Science at UNSW. Inside that is the School of Mathematics and Statistics. And this is a series of videos that supports one of our flagship courses in first year, Math 1131 or Mathematics 1A, the Linear Algebra Component. So the idea is to present a selection of solutions to tutorial problems that are accessible online to anyone who wants to watch them. All right, so we're going to be going through the algebra notes at the end of each chapter. There are problems. We're not going to be doing all of the problems. We're going to be doing some selected number here uh, online. So I'm going to be starting things off, but uh, I will be joined uh, later by my colleagues. And one thing we want to do here is not just give you solutions, but also give you a little bit of background to make sure that you're on the right page in terms of understanding the statement of the problem, the meaning of the words involved. It's very important to understand the words used in any problem. It's also important to lay out a solution very clearly, but concisely, so that somebody else can come along and read your solution and that it makes sense. So hopefully we'll be giving you close to model solutions that will give you something to uh, aspire to. All right, so the first chapter is on vectors, very important part of linear algebra, where we're starting to work geometrically, not just in two-dimensional space, but in higher dimensions as well. Okay, now we're going to start with problem number one, a good place to start, which is in the plane, and it's just a little bit of familiarity working with basic vectors and linear combinations of vectors. All right, so here's the problem. We have three lines, horizontal, A, B, C is one line, D, E, F is another line, O, G, H is another line, and these are equally spaced lines. We also have equally spaced lines in the other directions, uh, the line A, D, O, B, E, G, and C, F, H. Okay, and then there's an additional point P, which happens to be the midpoint of uh, the segment A, D. Now, in addition, we are given some vectors. We're told that the vector O, H is called little h. Let me draw that. So the vector from O to H, there it is right there. That's the vector h. And the vector from O to a, from here to here, is called little a. So this vector here, all the way up there, that's the vector little a. All right, so we have vector h here and vector a here. And we're asked to express, in terms of h and a, these other vectors, the vector OC, the vector HA, the vector GC, the vector OP, and the vector GP. All right, so let's have a go. So let's start with OC. From O to C, how do we get there? Well, let me introduce a different color so maybe we can see things a little bit clearer. We want to go. So we want to go from O to C. There's the vector OC. All right? And we want to do it in terms of H and A. And we have to recognize that because of these parallel lines, this vector H is actually the same as this vector. That's also H. And so is this vector. That's also H. So these are all so h. And this vector we've said is a. And similarly, this one here is also a. This is a parallelogram. Okay, you can think there's lots of parallelograms in this picture because these are equally spaced parallel lines. And uh, this one here, we have another parallelogram. So this vector here is also the vector a. Okay, so now if we want the vector O, C, we ask ourselves, how do we get from O to C? Well, one way is to go up here along the vector A, and then from here to here. 
So we can write it as OA plus AC. But OA, we've said, is equal to the vector little a. And AC is the same as the vector H because this is a parallelogram. So AC is the same as H. And we've expressed OC as a linear combination of A and H. All right, how about HA? Well, now we're going from here to here. Let's draw that in. Okay, so there's the vector HA. And how do we get from H to A? Well, one way would be to say, well, we can go from H first to O, and then from O to A. So the vector HO is almost the same as the vector OH, but it's in the opposite direction. And so it's minus H. The vector OA is just the vector A. And so there's the answer. It's minus H plus A, which we could if we wanted to, but we don't have to, rewrite it as A minus H. And I should remember to put little vectors on top of things to make sure that we're remembering these things are vectors. All right, good. What about the third one, which is GC? From G to C. Well, I might not write the vector, but one way of getting from G to C is to first go from G to H. That's in the direction of one of the vectors that we're using as a basis here. And then to go from H to C. So we're thinking about decomposing this translation into these two movements in the directions parallel to the sides of this parallelogram. Now, what is GH? Well, GH is the same direction as H, but it's obviously not as long. In fact, it's exactly half as long because we've stipulated that these three lines are equally spaced. So if OH is the vector H, then GH will be the vector 1 half H, or H over 2. And HC, well, that's the same vector A that we've been talking about. So we just add A, and we get GC as an expression involving H and A. Maybe we'll come over here for number 4, OP. Okay, now we're going from O to P, where I remind you that P is the midpoint of AD. So from O to capital A is the vector A. Going from O to D would be halfway, so that would be A over 2. This would also be A over 2. And since this one is, P here is halfway between these two, going from here to here would be half of that. So it would be A all over 4. So altogether, OP, we can think of that as being OD plus DP, if we like. And that's 1 half of A plus 1 quarter of A for a total of 3 quarters of A. And finally, GP, the vector from G to P. We can think about that as being the sum of GO with OP. To go from G to P, we can get there by first going in this direction and then going in this direction. Now GO is the same as HG. That's in the direction of H, but half the size and in the opposite direction. So that's minus H over 2. And OP, we've just established that that's 3 quarters A. So those are the various answers. We've got OC is equal to A plus H. 
We've got HA is equal to A minus H. We've got GC equals H over 2 plus A. OP is 3 quarters of A. And GP is minus H over 2 plus 3 quarters A.